This is Jamie Lynn Smith Fletcher. I'm with the Public Library of Mount Vernon in Knox County, and um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to our Communities for Immunity kickoff event. I am really glad that you could be here. I do want to tell everyone the webinar is being recorded. Um, if you are here as an attendee, you won't be seen unless we let you talk and you activate your screen. Um, but, you know, just be aware that like the chat's public. So if you say something, we all see it. And if you don't want to be seen, feel free to just block your camera. No big deal. Um, we're just glad that you could join us and glad that you are here with us today. And with that, I will turn things over to Jess. Forgot to start my video, so sorry about that. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm Jess. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm one of the interns um, working with uh, Jamie Lynn on this program. It's super awesome. Um, and you may be sitting there and asking yourself, what is CFI? What does this mean for me? What's this program? All great questions. Um, CFI, which stands for Communities for Immunity, is an initiative supporting the work of museums and libraries and engaging their communities in COVID-19 vaccine confidence. Thank you, Jess. So we're going to do a quick round of introductions. I've already introduced myself, but I want to welcome um, one of our community partners. Pam Palm is here with us from Knox Public Health. So Pam, if you want to say hello to everyone. We're happy to be working with the public library on this project. Misinformation and trying to get people vaccinated is a big part of what we've been doing during the pandemic. So this project uh, hones in on that and, and we're very excited to be doing that. So anxious to be working with you all and maybe someday meet you in person. Thank you, Pam. Our other partners whom I want to acknowledge from the very top of this include not only Knox Public Health, Knox Community Hospital, Ohio Eastern Star Home, New Directions, Interchurch Social Services. So this is a kind of a big group of people and we're all concerned about public health. So we want to make sure that we do the best we can with it. And with that said, I will have the interns do a popcorn round of introductions, starting with Amara, who is to my left. <laughs> So hi, my name is Amara, um, she, her, her pronouns. Uh, my hometown is in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and I am majoring in anthropology. And uh, I, I guess I would popcorn to Shauna. Good morning, my name is Shauna. I am a sophomore English major from West Hartford, Connecticut, and Leah. Hi, my name is Leah. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a sophomore and I'm majoring in modern languages and literatures and I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Jess? I did a quick introduction before, but I did not give my hometown. I'm from Chicago. I am also a sophomore and I am majoring in English. And again, my pronouns are she or hers. Thanks everybody. I am gonna go ahead and um, share my screen with you so that we can get going here with our full presentation. Um, we've got a little bit of stuff to cover today and we're gonna try to do this um, you know, as expediently as possible so that uh, we can um, get you moving and get to the point where you ask us questions. As we proceed, though, I do want to encourage you, you know, you're welcome to drop a question in the chat and um, you can also raise your hand. Shauna will be monitoring that and we are happy to, you know, um, to answer those as we go. Um, so welcome, welcome. And we are off. Excuse me, we've already... Oops, gone through this, thanks to Jess, and we did our intros. So what is Communities for Immunity, Jess? I said this earlier, slightly yeah, early, okay. but um, <laughs> uh, Communities for Immunities, which you can, we also shorten to CFI, is an initiative supporting the work of museums and libraries and engaging their communities in COVID-19 vaccine confidence. Thank you so much. And we also uh, want to be clear about why the library is involved. Um, libraries are sort of information. And we've been concerned for a very long time about, you know, misinformation. And we are our, our reference librarians and, and uh, every our librarians often work with members of the public who just aren't sure how to verify something and come to us for, you know, kind of like technical assistance or tips. Um, so libraries are already doing that work. Um, we also are places where everybody shows up. It's a library is one of the few places where everything is free. You can walk in the door, people will help you. That's what we're here to do. So um, we have a lot of 
you know, our relationships with our patrons and our community members are, are a treasure to us. That's what we do and why we love what we do. So we're already, um, we want to use that trust and make sure that um, people come to us so that we can help them make informed um, health decisions and empower them to make those decisions for their, themselves by, you know, like providing good information and showing them how to determine what is credible and maybe what isn't. So when, if you ever have a question, go ask a reference librarian. Um, but the reason that it, the library is doing this is because we're already sharing a lot of information about COVID-19. Um, librarians often work to translate like um, high-level science into everyday layperson's terms that are accessible to the public. Um, and we've been serving as sites for other public health efforts like our blood drives. And so the serving as a vaccination site is a natural extension of that work. Now, we um, that you want to know what we're going to do with the grant we got in Knox County. So I will turn things over to our interns to talk about the programs that we're doing. Although I think for one month to cover, um, we have some walk-in vaccination clinics and those are scheduled um, and we will be sharing the dates for those in a document that will drop into the chat. Um, and uh, basically you can just walk in and you can talk with a vaccine ambassador, one of our trained volunteers. You can talk with the nurse who is there and um, they will answer any questions that you have um, or help you find the information that you need. If you are 12 or older, you can get vaccinated that day. Um, if you're an adult, just bring your photo ID. If you have insurance, that's great. You don't need it. But if you have insurance, please bring your insurance card. And if you want to have a, a minor who is 12, between 12 and 18, sorry, 12 and 17, um, receive vaccination, um, they just need to be accompanied by a parent or legal guardian. So um, we want to make it easy. You don't need an appointment. Just show up during clinic hours and, um, and we will hook you up with with your vaccine. Amara. Hi. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the vaccine ambassadors and what the vaccine ambassadors are, are trained volunteers who are going to be coached in talking to people about the benefits of COVID-19. Um, and their main goal is to provide support at library events. Um, the vaccine ambassadors will also receive a small stipend and a t-shirt, pretty cool, um, identifying them as a program volunteer. Our talking to loved ones about the COVID-19 vaccine session is part of our peer-to-peer -peer program, which discusses communication strategies for having conversations to help empower your friends and your family so that they can make informed decisions about the COVID-19 vaccination. And we have two of these sessions. Um, there's one on January 24th and another on February 7th, and they will both take place at the main library. Talk the Vax is one of our discussion groups. Um, it's a Knox Pages like community listening session that provides opportunities for people to discuss their thoughts, questions, and concerns about the COVID-19 vaccine. And the dates that we have scheduled so far are February 17th at Knox Memorial Building in the Veterans Hall and March 3rd at the Gallagher Center at Ohio Eastern Star Homes from 7 to 8 p.m. Christians in the Vaccine um, is a program where the library will be collaborating with local clergy, physicians, and public health experts to host a faith-based discussion using the Christians in the Vaccine Toolkit. Um, each event will be followed by an on-site vaccination clinic. Another one of our projects is our social media toolkit and our ensuing social media platforms. Um, our social media toolkit will be uh, will compri be comprised of digital materials available on the library website that patrons can use and refer to. Um, examples would be some of our peer-to-peer -peer discussions um, and those formats we are hosting in person. Some of those materials will be posted on our social media accounts, others on our websites. You can digitally access those materials if you can't attend events in person. Other useful information, including updated CDC guidelines, um, advice from local uh, doctors, nurses, other health professionals will also be included. It's definitely going to be a great resource if you're looking for something. And also, this page shows where you can follow us on social media. We have a Twitter, a TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram account. They're all going to be great resources in addition to that social media toolkit on our website. 
So Profiles in Immunity is a social media campaign that highlights the vaccination stories of Knox County locals. Sharing these stories will promote confidence in the vaccines and will encourage conversations about vaccination. The videos are going to be posted on TikTok and other social media platforms like Facebook. We're also doing a number of mobile vaccination sites. Um, I, we're actually still booking all of these, but we're, we have two coming up at Fredericktown Community Library. Um, one is on Monday, February 14th. So celebrate Valentine's Day by bringing your loved one to Kisses for Jabs. You will not get to kiss anyone, particularly our staff, but we are going to be giving away chocolate kisses um, in bulk that day. So come get a handful of candy, um, get your shot. And then on Monday, March 7th, <clears throat> we're, it's National Cereal Day. So we are cereal-ish about stopping COVID-19. And I believe we're giving away little boxes of cereal for those who get jabbed that day. And uh, you can also get your second shot. So if you got your first shot at the, on Valentine's Day, you can get your second one on, um, on Monday and just get um, a nice snack each time that you go. Uh, we also have one of these coming up at our partner, Interchurch Social Services in Mount Vernon, and we're really, really excited about that. So you can stop by that this clinic on Thursday, March 3rd from 1130 to 3.30. Um, and uh, the library is doing a program called Do Your Own Research, and this is pretty cool. Um, if Basically, our reference librarians are partnering with folks from uh, local public health officials um, from from Knox Public Health and a public health nurse from a university. Uh, so this workshop pretty much teaches people strategies to identify online misinformation so that they can protect themselves from fraud and scams and COVID-19 misinformation. So while we'll focus on COVID-19, you can use these skills, um, particularly, you know, I have an elder relative I take care of and the, because I get her mail and her email, the number of scams and fraud that are out there is just can really be overwhelming. So this is helpful information for people of any age. Um, and this pretty much wraps up what we're offering so far. Um, there are a couple of other things in the works and uh, we will announce those programs as we get them locked in. But for now, it is your turn to talk um, or rather to drop questions into the chat. So let us know if you have any questions at this time. I do not see anything right now, but one of the things that they teach you in um, graduate school for teachers is to give people ample wait time. So um, if anybody had, we'll give it another minute. And um, we just also posted contact information for the program. Um, that's my email and that is my phone extension at the library. So if you need to, to reach me and you wanna ask questions, you, you know, we're going too fast and you didn't capture the date for an event, you can email me at knoxwrites1, sorry, at gmail.com, or you can call 740-392-BOOK, extension 259. Um, all of our events, as with any library event, are free and open to the public. We do require um, registration, though, for these events. And when you attend, we are observing COVID-19 safety protocols. So all attendees at our events uh, need to wear a mask that uh, is well fitted and fully covers the nose and mouth, not just for your protection, also for the protection of our staff, because we want to make sure that we are modeling um, prevention and try to keep everybody safe and healthy. Um, I do not see any further questions. So if this is it, I want to thank Pam for being here with us today to our interns, Leah, Jess, Amara, and Shauna for doing a fantastic job helping to present this information. And if you think of something later, please reach out to the library, visit our website, follow us on social media, and come to a program. We would love to see you and have you get involved with helping us um, put a stop to the pandemic. This is our best shot. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.